If you're planning to study abroad, I'm pretty sure you've heard this phrase so many times. You can study in Europe for free. But is it actually true? Let's find out. Since I moved to Portugal, I got numerous comments from you guys saying, Yulia, film a video about education in Portugal, because Portugal is in Europe, and education in Europe is almost free. So in today's video, we'll be talking about education in Portugal, and by the end of this video, we'll find out if Portuguese education is actually free and how you can lower your tuition fees. Go get yourself a cup of tea and let's get started. Education system in Portugal is pretty similar to many countries. You have preschool, then you have primary school, secondary school, and then you have higher education. Unlike in Canada or the US, there are no colleges in Portugal, so you can either go to a public university or to a polytechnic university. By the way, polytechnic universities can be both private and public. But what is a polytechnic university, Yulia? So it's basically like a college. If you want to study something that's hands-on, if you want to get more practical education, get a lot of training, then polytechnic university is your choice. As in other countries, there are three types of programs available in Portugal. Bachelor's degree, master's degree, and a doctorate degree. Both universities and polytechnic institutions that's what they called here, they have bachelor's and master's programs. Oh hey, have I noticed you there? Did you know that in Portugal you can study in Portuguese, but if your Portuguese is not good enough, you can study in English? And if your English is not good enough, well, I have a gift for you guys. Many of you know that I've been learning German with Lingoda for the past year or so, and I honestly love it. Lingoda is an online language school and you can pick between studying English, Business English, Spanish, German or French languages. My favorite part about Lingoda is that you can study from anywhere you want, anytime, any day, it's all up to you. Since it's the holiday season, Lingoda prepared a gift for you. If you've been wanting to improve your language, to learn another language, Lingoda gives you a free week of classes, meaning you can either take three group classes or one private class. And if you like the course, if you decide to learn more, to continue your course, you'll get 30% off your initial deposit. So if you've been one of those people waiting for a sign to start doing something, hey, I'm here, I'm your sign. Don't forget to use the code in the description box down below and enjoy your free week and 30% off your course. And I'll see you guys in class. Let's go back to the video. As for the universities, there are currently 14 public universities in Portugal and 36 private universities in Portugal, with 20 public and 64 private polytechnic institutions. The highest ranked universities are University of Lisbon, University of Porto, Coimbra University and Nova University of Lisbon. Let's be honest, they are not top universities in the world rankings. Yes, they're like somewhere in 400, but they're good universities that provide quality education for both local and international students. Rumors say that Joan Rowling was inspired by Portuguese universities and students when writing Harry Potter, but I feel like it's a topic for a whole another video. If you want a video about John Rowling and universities, Smash that like button. The largest university is University of Lisbon, of course, it's the capital, and it has around 50,000 students studying here. Number two by size is the University of Porto, and the oldest university of Portugal is the University of Coimbra. As I mentioned before, all the programs are kind of similar to any other university in the world. You have masters, you have bachelors, you have doctorate, but what about the prices? Tell us, Yulia, how affordable is it to study in Portugal? Let's talk about prices for locals first. If you're planning to get your bachelor's degree, prepare to pay somewhere from 500 to 1000 per year. If you're doing your master's, the fees may vary from 500 to 2500 euros per year. If you want to study, let's say, at the University of Madeira, then it's going to be around 4000 euros per year. But don't forget that if you are an international student, the fee might slightly be higher. But compared to Canada or the US, I mean, 12 to 15,000 euros per year, I feel like it's still affordable, knowing that you can get a European passport after five years. But we're gonna talk about that a bit later. If you are a European citizen, you can always enroll into university in your home country. If they participate in Erasmus program, which is an exchange program, you can literally 
spend a year in Portugal, study here for a year, and then go back to your university or to another university. And of course, private universities will be on a higher spectrum, I would say. Some programs cost around seven to 10,000 per year. But again, if we're talking about global education, if we're talking about other countries, Australia, UK, Switzerland, US, Canada, Portugal is still on the affordable level, I should say. The entry requirements are pretty much the same as anywhere in the world. You will need your grades, AKA transcripts. If you're applying for bachelor's degree, then it's gonna be your school transcripts. If you're applying for a master's degree, it's gonna be your university transcripts. English exam. In Portugal, you can study either in Portuguese or in English. And then a whole bunch of papers, applications, you know what's up. Application fees. Some programs might require you to have a resume or a portfolio, but again, it's like anywhere in the world, pretty much. Similar to Canadian colleges, some universities in Portugal may ask you to write some entrance exams. For example, in Canada, if you want to study medicine, they will make you write a chemistry and a biology exam. Same here in universities. If you want to get your bachelor's in, I don't know, medical science, prepare to write those entrance exams. But Yulia, you've mentioned that you can actually lower your tuition fees. And yes, my friends, there are still scholarships available for both local and international students. There are scholarships for EU residents, non-EU residents, for students from specific countries. All the information about scholarships can be found on the university's website because the information changes every year the amounts of scholarships they also change every year so you need to do your own research and see how much financial aid is available for your specific program for your specific university and another way to save on your tuition fees is to file taxes here in portugal i mean you're supposed to file taxes here anyway but i've heard that you can get back up to 30 percent of your tuition fees so if you're on a budget maybe it's a good idea to talk to the accountants and to the tax people and ask them these questions because 30 percent from your 10k tuition fees is 3k i mean why not just uh, get it back right and i've also mentioned that you can get your passport after five years so the thing is with portuguese immigration it's just i couldn't find an official source because some sources say you can study for five years do your bachelor's do your master's and after five years you can apply for your permanent residency or for a passport but the more i talk to people who studied here they're like oh yes but yes but there is always this but theoretically you can do that i've also spoke to a school representative and he told me yes this pr slash passport pathway is available and even if you've studied for less than five years you will get one year residence permit for you to find a job to settle to kind of get used to the new reality of being unemployed, not a student. And if any of you studied here in Portugal, please let us know if it's actually true that you can get a passport after doing your bachelor's and master's. But why should you choose Portugal over Canada, over the US, UK? First of all, the climate. Yes, people on this channel know that I absolutely not a fan of this 300 sunny days per year, but I'm the 1% of 100% of people that are moving here. 99% of people, they like, yes, I love the weather. I moved here just because of the weather. So if you're coming from a warmer country, Canada or even the US, it might be very cold for you, my friend. Because you know, like minus 30 in winter, mm, no good, no good. The second reason, Portugal has been developing a lot. There are a lot of startup programs, business incubators. So if you want to do something like your own business, or whatsoever, I feel like Lisbon is the place to be. But also if you want to travel while studying, Portugal is an amazing hub for that. Literally, if you book your tickets in advance, you can travel for like 30, 40 euro to other countries. And I feel like when you are a student, it's an amazing opportunity. Like you have so much time. Yes, maybe you are on a budget while studying, but you can always work while studying. Like if you study full time, you still have evenings to work. I feel like Portugal is such an underrated destination for studies for international students, but hopefully this video will help you guys learn something more. If you have any questions, don't forget to ask them in the comment section down below and I'll see you next week. Bye. Thank you.